Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In this video, I'll be going over medical abbreviations, the letter I. Medical abbreviations, letter I. ICP stands for intracranial pressure. And ICP is the pressure exerted by fluids, such as the CSF, which is the cerebral spinal fluid inside of the skull and on brain tissue. Normal ICP is normally 7 to 15 millimeters of mercury. ICS stands for intercostal space. Now, you're, knowing your prefixes here and what prefixes mean will help you out. Inter means in between. So intercostal, and these are basically your ribs here. So now in space, Spanish, we say ribs is costilla. So costal is probably derived from Latin, the Latin term for rib, but um, enter in between the ribs, right? So that's all it means, intercostal spaces, in the space in between the ribs. And one very important landmark that you have to learn in nursing is where the PMI is with the point of maximum impulse, and that is at the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line. So you here's the clavicle and you go down the middle of the clavicle and at the fifth intercostal space, which is the mitral valve, is where you can hear the heart the best. And this was obtained from nurseseps.com. ICU stands for intensive care unit. It's where nurses take care of some of the sickest patients. So um, definitely shout out to all the ICU nurses that have worked so hard this past year with COVID. ID stands for intradermal and intradermal means, intra means in, right? So in the dermal layer of the skin. If you're giving an intradermal, you're only injecting at an angle of five to 15 degrees. This was obtained from the CDC site for when you're performing a tu tuberculin skin test. You do need to see a wheel like this. If you don't see a wheel when they do the TB test, then you didn't perform it properly. Also, a proper TB test, you should see a wheel of six to 10 millimeters. If it's not six to 10, again, you didn't do it properly, you probably went too deep. I and D, if you watch um, Dr. Pimple Popper, she performs lots of I and Ds, which are incision and drainage. And incision and drainage of a skin abscess, what happens is that they open it up and they need to do this in order to get the pus out. I and D is a great way of draining an ab abscess to relieve pain and speed healing. Occasionally, they will have to pack the abscess, which is what's visible down here. I don't recommend use this term. This is an older term, but if you see it, at least you know what it means. IDDM stands for insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. And the reason why this is an older term is because this used to refer to type one diabetes because type one is the one that you have to have insulin to treat, whereas type two, you can treat with oral medication. However, some people have type two diabetes that's so out of control that they also need insulin. So when referring to diabetes, you could just make sure you write either it's type one or type two, because some people with type two also do use insulin. IE stands for immunoelectrophoresis. And what immunoelectrophoresis is, it's a blood test used to measure the type of immunoglobulins that are present in your blood. Immunoglobulins are a group of proteins that are also known as antibodies. They're the first line of defense against invading pathogens, so they help your body fight infection. IG stands for immunoglobulin. And again, immunoglobulin is also known as antibodies. IM stands for intramuscular. Again, intra means in the muscle. So these are types of injections. It's important that if you're going into nursing or you're going to be providing injections that you deliver the medication in the appropriate route. Intradermal, we already talked about the PPD one. Intravenous is inside the vein. Subcutaneous is in the fat tissue. And I IM goes deeper, right? So here's the fat layer and then here's the muscle layer. And IM usually are injecting at a 90 degree angle and it goes in the muscle, intramuscular. IN stands for intranasal. One medication that's very commonly used that's intranasal is flonase or fluticasone. INO stands for intake and output. So intake includes, for example, the orange juice, the coffee, and output would be the measuring appropriately how much is in the Foley bag. IO. OP 
stands for intraocular pressure, and intraocular pressure is the fluid pressure inside of the eye. Everything in the body needs to maintain equilibrium, and on certain organs that have um, blood or fluid need to maintain a pressure in order to maintain that homeostasis. And the eye is just is the same way. So eye pressure is also measured in millimeters of mercury. Normal eye pressure is between 12 to 22. And if intraocular pressure is high, then that could they could have glaucoma or they could have ocular hypertension. Ocular hypertension is when someone has high uh, intraocular pressure, but they're not showing signs of glaucoma. It's important that you get regular vision exams because if your IOP is high and you develop glaucoma, you could lose your vision. IUD is an intrauterine device. They have copper IUDs and they have hormonal IUDs, and they prevent pregnancy by changing the way sperm cells move so that they can't get to an egg. And if sperm can't get to an egg, then there's no pregnancy. IV is intravenous, so in inside of the vein. IVP is intravenous push, so this most likely would be normal saline here, and they're pushing it here to clean the line. Always before doing anything IV push, make sure that you unclamp the tubing. And please swab your hubs with alcohol. That's my pet peeve when nurses don't swab the hub, the valves with alcohol. You're putting something directly into someone's bloodstream. You don't want to shoot bacteria that's sitting on the valve into their bloodstream. It could potentially lead to um, the bacteria traveling to their heart valves and causing issues there. They could get sepsis. You want to be very careful when you're a nurse. Please be very careful. IVPB is intravenous piggyback. And all piggyback means is you have your large volume IV bag. Your, your, let's say that this is normal saline, right? Your main line. Normal saline would be running continuously whether or not they were getting, let's say, an antibiotic right? This pauses temporarily while this proceeds to run through the line. When this is done, then the normal saline will, will continue going. There are ways to run both of these simultaneously, but I piggyback as we're giving this one and then we'll resume giving the original fluids that we were giving. Thank you so much for watching. If you want the PowerPoint for this video, then make sure you like, subscribe, you turn on the notification bell, and you send an email to nursingwithprofessorb at gmail.com. Send me a screenshot that you liked the video, that you subscribed, and that you turned on the notification bell. Thank you.